Well, welcome back into three news at four. Take a look at your screen here. So yesterday the Browns picked this design to be the winner of their new dog logo contest. The winning design was created by Houston Mark and was selected following two rounds of fan voting. Now it seems to include several Easter eggs hmm. that serve as nods to both the city of Cleveland and Browns history. So who else would we have here but our guy Mike Polk. Okay, Mike, you have some thoughts on this. I do. And, and we really, really want to hear them. Well, I'd love to share them. Folks, yeah. if you noticed the plume of white smoke arising from the chimney of Brown Stadium this week, it wasn't because they were burning the first energy sign, although that'd be great. It's because the team and its fans have selected a new dog logo. It was a spirited contest, but the people have spoken, and now we must abide by that decision because Brown's fandom is a democracy. As far as the new dog logo itself, I think it's fine. That's a tough looking pooch, right? Wouldn't want to meet that if I were a mailman in a dark alley. <laughs> the reaction from fans on social media seems generally positive. Though, of course, because this is the internet, there's also no shortage of haters, with some suggesting that it looks like a generic XFL logo, and others pointing out that it bears a striking resemblance to the logo for Red Dog Beer, the official garage drinking beer of the mid to late 1990s. But make no mistake, this is a unique and intricate design that even includes several hidden images representing the Browns fan base and the team's history, such as the Guardian Bridge, a guitar pick, and what is supposed to be an outline of the state of Ohio in the dog's ear, a rendering that looks like it was drawn by me under duress with my left hand after a night of drinking red dog beer in a garage. But these are all minor nitpicks and certainly nothing to get hung up on. As I said, most fans seem to like this surly new logo and particularly the level of intimidation that it might offer to our rivals. Throughout this contest, the consensus among fans seems to be the meaner the better, as illustrated by the five finalist selections, with many agreeing we need a logo that will strike fear into the hearts of our opponents. I understand that sentiment, but I do consider it a bit off base. If rival teams have seemed insufficiently intimidated by the Browns in recent history, I'd suggest that it might have less to do with how menacing our logo appeared and more to the fact that we've averaged about five wins per year oh, since no. the return oh. of the team in 1999. Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps a fearsome logo is a crucial aspect of an NFL team's success, and I'm foolishly undervaluing this tactic. Let's consider this. I'm trying to remember who won the Super Bowl last year. Oh, it's, that's right, it's the Chiefs. Let's take a look at their logo. Here it comes. Ooh. Oh, that's not intimidating. Not particularly horrifying at all. I think we can agree. And yet somehow Patrick Mahomes was able to overcome this embarrassing obstacle to win the Super Bowl, not once but twice. But that could be an anomaly, actually. Let's focus on the Browns again. We all know that there's been a bit of a title drought for the Browns as of late. But they did win four NFL championships back in the day. Perhaps those teams reap the benefits of having an intimidating looking logo. Remind me, what was the team's official logo during those four seasons, the four title seasons? What was it? Oh, right. Ooh. In conclusion, maybe introducing a scarier mascot will not be the fast lane to Super Bowl success that some people hope it will be. And maybe I'm just a little bitter that my own design seen here was rejected fairly early in the contest. That's it. But the people have spoken. <laughs> The people have spoken and I can accept that. So welcome to town, scary new dog logo and go Browns.